By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back at the Often Troll Cup. This is round number five. We have a total of six rounds in the Swiss, by the way. So we're almost there. We're almost ready to start with the top eight series of the Often Troll Cup. But today we are going to look at an exciting match between Madling Max. He is playing a Twiddle Vault deck and he's taking on Timmy. So me. So I'm actually on the live stream. So I'm going to show you my skills with my deck, Timmy's Spellbook. Now, before I start with the deck decks and everything else, I would first like to ask you to subscribe and ring that bell. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Now, before I start with the deck decks, I've got beautiful deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to skip this section. I know some people enjoy first going to the match and then checking out the deck decks. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG games. Click on there and it'll take you straight to the action. And for now, I'm going to start with the deck of my opponent today, Madling Max. Let's take a look. And here we see the deck of Madling Max. So he is playing Twiddle Vault, one of the best combo decks in the scene, in old school, maybe the best combo deck. Uh, in the second online uh, edition of NoobCon, which is basically the world championships of old school, Danny Friedman won with a Twiddle Vault deck. And that list was very much... The same as the list that we see here. I'm sure there are a few tweaks in there, but I'm far from a specialist uh, when it comes to Twiddle Vault decks. As a matter of fact, I don't enjoy playing against them. I love the card Time Vault, the art, the nostalgia, everything about it. But the thing with Twiddle Vault is, and maybe we're going to see that in this match as well, there are moments in the game when the deck goes off. It's like just watching your opponent playing a game of solitaire, and at the end you lose. So there's not a lot of interaction once the deck is doing what it wants to do. So what it wants to do basically is get endless amounts of turns using Time Vault. So Time Vault is an artifact for two. It enters the battlefield tapped, and Time Vault doesn't untap during your untap step. If you would begin your turn while Time Vault is tapped, you may skip that turn instead if you do untap the Vault. And then you can tap it to take an extra turn after this one. But of course, there are other ways to untap the Time Vault. The main strategy here is to untap it with Twiddle. So Twiddle is this little blue instant that says tap or untap target permanent. So you can just untap your Twiddle Vault, take an extra turn. Now that by itself sounds kind of harmless, but this deck is all about getting the Twiddles Back from the graveyard, there are four recalls in here. Of course, there's a regrowth in here, but there's also a time twister in here. And when you combine time twister and regrowth, you cannot get deck dead, right? So the way this deck works is at a certain point, uh, Madling Max is going to draw so many cards with the Howling Mines, with the Sylvan Library, that he's just going to find a way to recast his Twiddle every single turn. He gets an endless amount of turns. And then he can basically kill me with, you know, his fireball. So there's a fireball in here and he can just fireball me to death. That's basically what he wants to do. So uh, if his deck works, I'm basically doing nothing and he's drawing a ton of cards and he's killing me. I have to say that um, this deck is not easy to pilot. And I do respect the fact that people are trying to bring combo decks to tournaments and trying to get results with it. So I have as a respect for that and also respect for Madling Max for, you know, taking this deck to the tournament because you got to play six rounds with it. You're playing Magic the entire day. It's not just one game. So this deck to play, to pilot, is actually quite exhausting. And I think there's nobody like Danny Friedman. Like, he's, he's the top Magicker, the top player of this type of deck. But I think it's great to see other players giving it a try. And I'm a little bit afraid of playing against this deck as well, to be honest, because... I've never won against Twiddle Vault. I've only played against it uh, twice now and both at tournaments, both of Timmy's Spellbook and both times I've lost. So we're just going to have to wait and see how it's going to work out in this uh, specific battle. Anyway, this is the deck of Meddling Max. I'm a little bit scared. Now let's take a look at my deck, Timmy's Spellbook. And here we see my deck. So this is a deck you probably know when you follow the channel. So people ask me like... Is the deck still changing? Is it still evolving? Yes, Timmy's Spellbook is still changing, especially the sideboard. I'm, I'm just keep tweaking and making differences. The, the list actually today is the same as the list that I brought to the tournament last year. Um, the, at that, that time, the energy fluxes were quite new. You know, they were kind of a new addition to the sideboard. And I'm really looking forward to using them against Madeline Max. I think 
it could be a key card for me because Meddling Max's strategy is so, um, you know, he needs his artifacts, especially his Howling Mines. And he, he just needs to play out a lot of stuff. He's playing with all the mocks. And so I think my Energy Flux is really going to help me here. It's one blue and two. It's an enchantment. And it reads, you've got to pay two during your upkeep for each artifact or else the artifact gets uh, destroyed. So, you know, it just has this upkeep cost of two. Maybe it's kind of strange you started deck tech talking about the sideboard, but I'm just doing that now because I think the Energy Flux can play such a big role. Now, when we look at the rest of the deck, it is really a control mid-range deck. Um, you know, I've got some counter spells. Basically, what I want to do is I just want to get to two blue mana as quickly as I can, hopefully have some counter spells backed up. And then, you know, as the match evolves, find the right moments in the game to start playing out my cards. It's pretty creature heavy as well because I'm playing with four teams, two ghost ships, a pirate ship. I'm playing with air elementals, my Moti Jin clone. So I, I just also just want to win by, you know, turning my creature sideways or, of course, pinging with the Tim from a control position. Um, I usually don't use the counter spells for creatures. In this match, I'm not even going to do that because there are no creatures to play against. But I just want to point that out with this deck because I have other solutions for the creatures. I'm playing one Maze of If. I'm playing my Icy Manipulators, of course, to tap down the creatures if need be. I'm playing my Psy Blasts, which are great against those 4-4 Flyers like Sarah Angels. And I'm playing with two Control Magic. So usually I want to get into a position where I can, for example, play Control Magic with Counterspell Backup. You know, that's always a great two for one. Um, or when my opponent just plays out a big threat that I don't have to counter it, like a big creature threat, because I've got my Icy Manipulator, for example, or my Psy Blast ready. And then I can use my counter spells for other key cards in the deck or simply to protect my own key cards, like my Gem Day Tome or, you know, maybe a Tim, depending on what kind of deck I'm playing against. Anyway, uh, this is my deck. I'm just going to keep it short because we've seen this deck on the channel often enough, but we haven't seen it against Twiddle Vault. So I'm also really curious to see how I will do against Meddling Max's deck. So we've looked at Meddling Max's Twiddle Vault, we've looked at my list, Timmy's Spellbook, and that means we're ready. Let's go to round number five of the Often Troll Cup. Game number one, I'm sitting on the left playing with Timmy's Spellbook Mono Blue, and my opponent Meddling Max, he's playing with Twiddle Vault. It's green, it's blue, it's red, I believe. There we see his opening hand, so he's got a Howling Mine, he's probably going to keep this. Howling Mine is so important for the Twiddle Vault deck, just to get all your components and he can start with Mox Sapphire Island into Howling Mine. Here we see my hand. I, that was quite quick, but I saw a Time Walk, a Strip Mine, an Island, a Ghost Ship. And here we go, the Fist Bump. Look at that. Howling Mine. So drawing two cards, which is nice, but usually when your opponent plays a Howling Mine, it's going to be pretty devastating. So at this moment, we of course don't know from each other what type of decks we are playing. I love the playmat and sleeves, by the way, of Meddling Max. I guess that's Max himself with his friends. Discarding a Cardi because of that mine. And throwing away my beautiful pirate ship, which kind of hurts, to be honest. But this is a great start for my opponent. Because there's just not too much that I can do with these extra cards early in the game. I really need my time. I just want to keep two blue open and pass, but he's kind of forcing me to take action. Taking an extra turn with the time walk that we saw earlier. The only good news for me about the Howling Mine is that it kind of guarantees me from hitting my land drops. Because I think my opening hand was kind of light on lands. I could consider playing that Strip Mine stripping the Volcanic. That would deny him from red. Which is not that, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but still. Yeah, that's exactly what I do here, trying to kind of, you know, slow him down. So he's putting his graveyard there on the right top corner. I think that's also part of being a Twiddle Volt player, because the graveyard plays such an important role with four recalls and a regrowth. Discarding here my Psionic Blast passing the turn. So what I could have done here is not strip the Volcanic, instead play out an Island or just use the strip as colorless mana and play out the Psy Blast. That would have been an option as well. And here we see the Sylvan, so I'm probably going to counter this. Here we go. So I kind of chose to keep my counter magic open. The nice thing about that is that I've now got six in hand, going to draw to eight. 
So I probably won't have to discard here. Probably going to play out an island. Eight in hand, I believe. So just, just play an island pass. Hopefully have counter magic up. Playing out a Mistress Factory. Okay, passing the turn. That's actually not too bad. Maybe if I can have another land drop next turn, I can animate the Factory, try to deal some points of damage and keep counter magic up at the same time. There we see an Underground Sea. So it's actually taking quite some time to find the pieces, but he does have that Demonic Tutor. He could cast a Tutor, but of course the risk here is that he's going to run into one of my counter spells. He's probably just going to play out the Felwer Stone and pass. And this is what I'm talking about when you're playing this type of deck that Max is playing. It's tough, you know, you got to think all the time. Going through his hand again. There's just not that much going for him. The only good thing about this match for him so far is that Howling Mine. There's the Felwer Stone, so I'm going to allow it. No reason to counter it, of course. And there we see a Demonic Tutor. He needs to tap the Underground Sea, though. There is a mana drain. So now I've got two extra mana. So hopefully I can play something big, put some pressure on, on Max. I mean, I'm not doing a lot in that department. We're both still on 20. I mean, the more time I give him, there's a bigger chance that he's going to find the pieces he needs and that I'm not going to win this one. There's a Library of Alexandria. It's going to help me draw some more cards. Looks like I'm going to tap down so I cannot counter next turn, taking a risk here, playing the Air Elemental, 7 in hand, passing the turn. So hopefully Max is going to whiff here. Oh, there's a Time Vault. Did you see that? And now the question is, what can he do with this Time Vault? Doesn't have a twiddle yet, though. I'm tapped out. One of the things he could do as well as play a recall on the Demonic. Oh, man, this is risky. This is the thing with these decks, you know, you take a risk and you're allowing Max to, you know, I tap out, I'm allowing Max this turn and Max is like, how can I take full advantage of this moment? So he's going to pitch two cards in the graveyard, probably going to get back Sylvan Library and Demonic. So that's now removed from the game and past turn. This is not, it, it could be worse. The question is, do I have counter magic to back me up to potentially counter the um, the Time Vault when it hits the board? Because Time Vault and Mnemonic in hand and the Sylvan, that's a very strong hand for my opponent, Max. What I can do here is uh, get into the red zone, deal four points of damage. He's going to drop to 16. I got a clone in hand, but I probably want to keep two blue open. I don't know if I have counter magic in hand. Already played out a counter spell and a mana drain. Just playing five in total. Discarding the brain geyser. Wow. I'm impressed with my own discipline here. I really, really, really want to try to get this. But I believe he found a counter spell and a time walk. Oh, this is devastating. This is devastating. I wonder if I'm going to counter the... Sylvan here, because that's probably the first card he's going to, yeah, playing out the Sylvan, saying, you know what, if you want to counter, counter. And there's a time walk. But do I have to discipline playing an Ancestral Recall? He's allowing it in response to the time walk. So we've got a nice a blue power battle going on here. I'm allowing him to continue. Is he going to play the time vault? And then do I have a counter spell. I wonder. I wish I could see my hand. Oh, he's going to go for the Demonic Tutor first. Probably going to look up. Is he going to... Oh, he's going to want to draw more cards with the Ancestral Recall. Yeah, that's an option. That's an option. I wanted to say maybe a Twiddle because you want to have a Twiddle in your, in your graveyard as well. But then again, with the Ancestral Recall, he's going to draw two more cards next turn and of course have the Sylvan trigger so you can look at the top four cards then he can play an Ancestral Recall so there's a pretty big chance he's going to find he's going to play it right now of course he's got a mana open so there's a pretty big chance he's going to find that Twiddle and I'm allowing it again I wonder if that means that I have no counter spell in hand or if that means that I've decided just to counter the um, 
the time vault from this point forward. It actually doesn't matter that much because Madling Max has a counter spell in hand to kind of back up whatever he's going to play out. He's got a twiddle there. This is looking super bad for me because he now gets all the parts uh, of his deck that he needs. Gets the fireball, gets the twiddle. Actually, he doesn't get the fireball, but anyway, it's on there. He doesn't need it yet. Brain Geyser. Oh, this is going to be crazy. I think I'm not going to have another turn here. Here we see the Time Vault. There we're going to see the Twiddle untapping the Time Vault, taking the extra turn. And that's why the dice is there. So after this turn, he's got another turn. What else can he do? And no counter magic for me, by the way. So I think I just don't have a counter spell. I mean, I was pretending to have one, but I don't. Gonna tap five, gonna take a damage, gonna go to ten, gonna play a Brain Geyser for three. Oh man, he's now drawing so many cards. Ancestral Recall, Brain Geyser, Howling Mine, taking extra turns, extra advantage of the Howling Mine. Oh, this is insane. This is insane. And this is actually how Twitter Volt is working. So I'm just sitting, looking at this, drinking a beer. And now he's got a regrowth. Oh, yuck. So he can regrowth. He also has a recall. He's got, he's got so much. He's winning this game so hard right now. And this is where I remember being in this point of the game. And I started thinking, okay, there are 50 minutes in an entire match. How long am I gonna look, going to look at this before I concede? And I'm, I'm not a fan of conceding. But in a tournament where you only have 50 minutes and when you're at a twiddle against a twiddle vault deck that's simply going off, there's not much you can do. You know, so I'm giving it a few turns here, but I'm already thinking, okay, at a certain point, you know, it's enough, and I'm going to uh concede here and go to game two. And then hopefully in game two, I'm gonna go for a very aggressive strategy, and I'm also gonna board in my energy fluxes, and hopefully I can get uh, a win that way. But that's something you always have to keep it. Well, you don't have to, but it's it, it's 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 a good idea to have it in the back of your mind, you know. So he's now taking that turn. Look at all those cards. He doesn't really need these, but he's gonna draw them anyway. And this is where, for example, the Psionic Blast could have been handy just to keep it in hand, because he's now all the way down to six. So if my deck would have been a little bit more aggressive. You know, I could have gotten this game. Then again, he's got so much counter magic now probably in hand that, you know, a Psyblast is not going to make it. The nice thing for me, I guess, is that this is giving me a lot of information, although I already know how these type of decks work. So using the recall, I'm saying, you got this, because now he's going to get back the regrowth, the twiddles, the whatever, and he's going to get endless amounts of turns. So I'm conceding here. Well done, Max, winning game number one. We're going to dive into our sideboards, and we're going to catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So at least I'm on the play, right? And here we see my hands. Ooh, I've got two counter spells. That's good. He's going to play out an island, pass the turn. Hopefully he does nothing silly. Here we see the hand of my opponent. <laughs> oh, again, a Howling Mine and the Library of Alexandria. He's going to draw so many cards. He's got a Time Vault. This is really tough. So playing the Tolaria, there's some art on there by MTG Underground. So maybe he's asking, what does that do? Although I think he knows. It, it takes away banding, but the most important thing is it gives me a blue mana. That's why it's in there. And it's just a cool altar. Anyway. There's the pass, so the Loa here, turn one. Playing an island. Oh man, this is such a good start by my opponent. I think I'm just gonna drink beer and see what's gonna happen. I think there was a Soul Ring there, so he can go into Soul Ring. And then he can play his Howling Mine. I wonder if I'm gonna counter the Mine. I probably should, but I mean... Uh, he also has the active lib uh, Library of Alexandria, right? So I'm just accepting the fact that he's going to draw tons more cards than me. Oh, I'm also finding a low out. It's funny. Passing the turn. I've got seven in hand. Oh, man. This is bad. So what I'm trying to do with my counter magic is I'm trying to kind of focus on the time vault. Because that, you know, it's kind of essential for his strategy. I think he's going to play out the land for turn, which is that Trop. Beautiful collection, by the way. He's going to play out, maybe, is he going to play out the second? He's going to play out another Howling Mine. 
He's got one mana floating, I guess one blue floating, or one green. It's a green dice, maybe it's green. He's thinking about playing out the Time Vault. There's the Time Vault. There's the counter spell. So I'm really kind of aiming my counter spells here. And I'm asking him to take it back to first draw a card and then counter it. And Max was very friendly, so thank you, Max, for that. And passing the turn. So I get to untap, draw cards. Although I guess, I mean, even if I wouldn't have had that one card to draw extra, doesn't matter. Then again, you never know. So for me, what's important here is to really time my moments. When am I going to counter? When am I going to play something out? Looks like I'm gonna tap two. What could I have? A, a copy artifact, perhaps? Yeah, copying the soul ring. Because the mana is gonna help me to play out a creature, hopefully, pretty soon. And at the same time, keep counter magic open. It's as simple as that. It's the only strategy that I have here against the Meddling Max. Look at that, taking a risk here. Okay, I've got a time walk. That makes sense. There's an ancestral recall. Important here to note is that I'm taking this risk because uh, Max only had that one blue open, so he didn't have enough mana for a counterspell. So I'm now going to draw three cards, so I've started my extra turn. I mean, this is insane, right? Both of us are drawing so many cards. The only thing that I've got going for me right now is that he doesn't have a time vault. Although his time vault is in the graveyard, which is kind of like a second library for him because of all the recalls, but... That's giving me hope. Tapping four here. Am I going to play a ghost ship? I probably boarded in my two extra ghost ships. No, I'm going to do my Never Neural's Disc from the sideboard. This is a very good card against him. If I can get it to untap, I can blow everything up. That would be amazing. But obviously, I am kind of nervous pitching a Timmy here. And I'm nervous because once this deck goes off, it goes off. There's nothing I can do. Hopefully, I've got counter magic in hand to stop a potential time vault. But of course, what to counter, when to counter, that is the big question. There we see a red elemental blast in hand by Madling Max. Doesn't have a red source though. So if he can find a red source, then he can protect whatever he wants to do with a red elemental blast. Red elemental blast, of course, being a super card against me. And this is a problem when you play mono blue. Red elemental blast works really well for all my opponents. But Blue Elemental Blast doesn't always do it against my opponents because they usually splash red in there. So we're just waiting now to see. And of course, Max needs a moment. So many cards in hand. And this is why this deck is so hard to pilot. There are so many things you have to take into consideration. There's the Volcanic Island, by the way, which is great for him. Having that red Elemental Blast backup. I think he's going to try to to get the Time Vault. Perhaps there with the Recall. And then, of course, I can, I can allow him to play the Recall, still focusing on the Time Vault. Or I can counter the Time Vault, because look what he's, he's got in his graveyard. Ancestral Recall and Time Vault. So if I can counter the Time Vault, I can cancel those cards out. And, of course, I don't know that he has that Red Elemental Blast in hand. So he's going to do it for two. So now I have to decide, am I going to counter right now, or am I going to give him the opportunity? I'm first going to draw a card. And now I'm going to try to counter. So I'm going to try to counter the recall. There's the red elemental blast from the sideboard. What two cards is he going to pitch? Is that a Sheevan Dragon, by the way, in, in his hand? Or just another red elemental blast? Kind of hard to see. I think it's a Sheevan. That's pretty cool coming in from the sideboard. So he's pitching two cards there, getting back the ancestral recall. And the Time Vault, and now he's probably got a discard, eight cards in hand, I believe. Yeah, and I'm kind of sorry here, Max, but I, I needed to have a good idea of what your graveyard was, what was on the battlefield, so sorry for doing that. He's actually going to discard the Time Twister. That is pretty cool. The question now is, am I going to use my Never Neural's Disc, or am I going to let him play out the, the Time Vault? Funny, by the way, we see Max rearranging his graveyard. You shoot Max at your deck. I'm sorry for doing that. They're your cards, but yeah, I was kind of like, I just wanted to make sure that I knew what was on the battlefield and what was in your graveyard. 
then again, this way it's very clear. You know, I can see the cards in your graveyard. For example, if you would just put them in a pile behind your, your deck, that would be difficult as well for me. Actually, what I'm doing would be more difficult because your graveyard is so important. Maybe I should add a torment script in my sideboard against these Time Vault decks. And now I'm really in the tank. I'm like, what should I do? Should I use the disc so he doesn't draw, you know, three cards, but he still has the Ancestral and Aloha? What I could do here is I can strip the Loa, activate the disc. Oh, this is so tough. And maybe, you know, I don't know if I have counter magic in hand. I'm, yeah, I'm going to use it. Going to use it here. So blow up his stuff. I've got one mana floating. And I'm going to blow up. Ooh, this is tough. This is, this is a strange decision. I remember this moment. What I want to do is I want to make sure that he cannot play out a Sylvan Library. You know, so I want to take him off of green. Um, but of course, there's also the Loa, the Library of Alexandria. But I'm like, he's already drawing so many cards. So I'm just going to allow him to keep giving him the Loa on the... But looking back at this, I kind of doubt my decisions. And here we, by the way, see a really cool altar made by AS Altars on this event. He was there, so I asked him to make this card for me, Timmy. And also, I love to support artists. So, you know, whenever I can, I really like, I'm also a big fan of Buddy, who also makes altars. He's also made a few. Anyway, passing the turn here. But my reasoning here was I want to cut off the option for him to play out of Sylvan. In hindsight, I think it would have been better to just go for the Library of Alexandria um, or go for the Volcanic Island because of that Red Elemental Blast. But we'll just have to wait and see. At least, at least the disc was bad for him, right? I mean, it took care of all his mana and his, and his Howling Mine. So he now only has four mana, which is kind of tough for him. Looks like he's gonna play out a second, another Howling Mine, Howling Mine number three. Oh, there's the Time Vault. Am I gonna respond to the Time Vault? First, I'm gonna draw a card. I think I'm gonna respond here. There's a counter spell, and he's putting it in the graveyard, so I'm lucky that he doesn't have a Red Elemental Blast here. Seven in hand, gonna draw card number eight. That is really nice because it's a ruby, so he can play the ruby. He's going to play a land for turn. I don't think he's played a land yet. Exactly. Play a land for turn. Play the ruby. Play the Sylvan. Wow. And play the Ancestral Recall. This is an awesome moment here. There's the Red Elemental Blast. So one of the lines of play could have been for him to first play Ancestral Recall and draw into that Red Elemental Blast, or maybe I would have tried to counter it and then play the Time Vault, but I think he's counting on drawing into Recall anyway. Actually, he already has one in hand, so he doesn't mind it, it that much that the, uh, the Time Vault is there in the bin. Anyway, taking, uh, taking on my turn. My opponent still being here on 20. Whoa, this is huge Energy Flux. I talked about this card in the deck deck, so Energy Flux puts a tax of two on each artifact. So you pay for it or the artifact gets destroyed and you have to do that in your upkeep. So it's now all the artifacts have an upkeep cost of two. A card from the sideboard. I have to say my sideboard is performing really, really well here. So he's tapping two mana of the mox and just to keep a mox around. I mean, the disc was really good against Max and I think this card is really good against him because, you know, now he only has that one, one mox, but this is, you know, he cannot use two mana, the mana for his Moxon, and his whole deck. You know, he wants to play out Howling Mine, wants to play out Time Vault. It's really a tax on his deck. I think there's a Mana Drain and a Time Vault there. I cannot see the third card. This is an exciting game, too. Again, we're both drawing tons of cards. I wonder if we, if we get around to play game number three. Ooh, a Mind Twist! Oh, that's yucky. At least he cannot play it out yet. Doesn't have any black mana. Oh, he's got Underground Sea. Oh, man. If he can find a moment to play that, that Mind Twist, that would be pretty devastating. 
He also has that Red Elemental Blast to back stuff up. Is he now going to play out? Ooh, interesting. He's going to play out the Red Elemental Blast on the Energy Flux, showing how important it is. And now I have to decide again. Am I going to counter? Am I going to protect it? I am not. I'm going to allow this. Maybe I've got another Energy Flux in hand. He's going to pass the turn, it seems. So I'm going to ping him for one. I'm going to go on 19. I'm going to draw a card for turn. Let's see what I can do here. Playing another island. Tapping four. Are we going to see a ghost chip? An icy manipulator. Mm, the problem for me, though, is that I want to keep two blue open, right? So I'm going to pass here. I mean, is Max now going to go back into this game? And again, I really, when I'm looking back at this, I really should have stripped the uh, the Library of Alexandria. Then it, you, you, That's the thing. When you look back at these matches, there's always a little thing you've done where you think, why was I doing that? And I should have done it differently. But that's what it's all about, of course. There's the Underground Sea. Does he have the Mind Twist? Did he pick it or not? I can't see it now. There's so many cards in his hand again. Yep, there's the Mind Twist. Oh, man. That is so devastating. Is he going to do it? Is he going to pull the trigger? Remember, he can just keep a red open. Or is he going to go? I mean, he could also go for the Howling Mine. Yeah, going for the Howling Mine. And again, I'm not biting. I'm really kind of like just... I've accepted the fact the fact that he's going to draw tons of cards. So I'm just focusing on a few. We're also ordering beers, by the way. That's a little um, piece of card you saw, the red card. That's where they take your orders on. So thank you, Max, for the beer. I appreciate it. Uh, what is he going to do here? Is he going to play another Howling Mine? I guess the silver lining about all the Howling Mines is that it, it, it makes his mind twist less, um, less impactful. I guess that's the word I'm... I'm looking for. And he's really in the tank here. What is he going to do? Also has that time vault, of course. It's hard to see the rest of his hand, though. Does have a twiddle in hand. I really, really hope that I'm going to find another energy flux because that would again be devastating for him. He's going to pitch a Sylvan passed the turn. I'm going to ping him again. He's going to go to 10. He's quite low because he took some damage. I'm going to tap a land because he took some damage from uh, from his own Sylvan. So, I mean, he's on 10. If I can have like a double side Blast and two more pings from the Wizard. And of course, I've got my, my factory. I could just attack with Mishra's factory and put him on 8. But it's, it's, it's so hard to comment on this because I'm just trying to remember what I had in hand. Very exciting game number two. Because, I mean, again, when you're playing against a deck like this, you're like, every moment he can take off and he's gone. He's out of reach. So whenever I get a turn, I have to take the fullest out of my turn. I have to assume there's not going to be a second turn. Or I have to just have a lot of magic, uh, counter magic up. Look at this. Playing an energy flux. This is really good. And this is really devastating. Are we going to see? No, he doesn't have a red elemental blast. And he doesn't have enough mana open to counter. So this is ideal for me. Going to play a copy. On the, uh, on the icy manipulator. That is an interesting choice. I could have chosen to keep four blue open to potentially play out a double counter spell. So I'm kind of signaling to Max that I only have one counter spell. I'm actually changing my mind here. I'm taking it, taking it back, changing my mind. So I guess I do want to keep 
four blue open. But, you know, it's so difficult because you also don't want to discard cards, but I think I've got to be disciplined here and just discard cards. Just do it, you know. Double counter spell is going to save me if I have it. Uh-oh, I guess I'm going to attack. Okay, I guess I want to attack for two instead of... I guess that's better as well than copying the, the icy. Also because I don't have enough mana to use both of the ICs. An eight is pretty low. I'm going to pitch here an air elemental and pass a turn. Oh man, and now the energy flux. This is this is devastating for Max here. This energy flux. This untap upkeep before he can draw, he's gotta decide. I mean, if he taps the mana down to, to keep the the howling mines ar around, which is kind of what I expect, it means he'll have less mana to actually do what he wants to do, and he needs quite a lot of mana. So he's gonna pay two for a howling mine, he's gonna let the other howling mine go. Probably because he has so many components in hand already. Which is still great for him because he gets to look at the top four cards because of that Sylvan. And again, this is so tough. Like, I'm not jealous at Max right now in this game because he needs to make so many decisions. Red Elemental Blast. Wow, those are four interesting cards. Yeah, he's going to go because he already has Twiddle in hand, I believe. Wow, and now he's got a double protection for whatever he wants to do. Mana Drain and a Red Elemental Blast. Oh man, I wonder what he's gonna do. I just hope I'm gonna get another turn. Hopefully I get to untap. I mean, he can ping and put him on seven, attack and put him on five. And maybe then ping him again and, and, and play a side blast if I time it right. Anyway, there is a... Mind Twist. Mind Twist for four here, it seems. Gonna play a Psy Blast on his life total. Ooh, this is interesting, by the way. I was expecting a Counter Spell, but he's gonna play a Psy Blast instead. And then it's gonna resolve, so a Mind Twist for four. I'm gonna lose these four cards. Two Islands and two Ghost Ships. So I boarded in extra Ghost Ships, I believe. I'm playing Disco Boat now. And that means I'm putting in uh, two extra ghost ships and two Navarro's discs, playing with four ships in total. Ooh, gonna take care of the energy flux. Now I can put him on, I, I think I've got the match, because I can put him on three. I can attack with the factory. I think I got the match here, attacking with the factory, put him on one. And ping him for the win! Yeah, man, this feels good! Obviously, I remember this game very, very well, but it feels great to look back at it again and to, to look at all my decisions and the decisions of Max, because now when I can see his hand, why he's doing what he's doing, it's super interesting. And yeah, you know, you can say what you want to say about the Twiddle Vault deck, but it's not easy to pilot how many decisions you have every single turn, how many cards you draw, it is insane. Anyway, we are going to shuffle up and we'll catch back up with you in game number three. Game number three, here we go. So it's 1-1, one, one, the deciding game. And look at that here. My opponent had to take a double mulligan. Going to start with five. It looks like I took a mulligan as well. I believe I've got six in hand there. Drawing card number seven. There's a City of Brass here for Max as an opener, an island, and a pass. That Red Elemental Blast is looking pretty good, but he doesn't have any any um, Howling Mines. That's his main problem. There is a Chaos Orb. There's another island and a pass. So Max is giving me some time here, but remember, my deck isn't quick either. Look at that, he's missing a land drop. There's an Energy Flux. In response, he's going to activate the Chaos Orb, of course, on the Flux. So I'm basically trading my Energy Flux for the Orb. Interesting technique again, eh? It's, it's, so, it's so nice to see all the different techniques throughout this tournament. Maybe I should make a video about that, showing all the different flips here. Let me know in the comments below if you would be interested in something like that. There's the Howling Mine, drawing two extra. So this is important for Max here, this Howling Mine and what I can do against it. Can I find another Energy Flux? There's another one. Yeah, I was already thinking when I... Ooh, yeah, of course, he had that Red Elemental Blast in hand, giving him here the thumbs up. This is a perfect response. 
Because I already thought when I when I played out the first one into the Chaos Orb, I'm like, hmm, is this a good decision? You know, I mean, should you trade this? Because it's it's such a a breaker, a deal breaker for, for Max's deck. But I had a second one in hand. There is the Time Vault. Oh man! The only good thing from here is that there's only one card in hand for Max. I believe it's the Sheevan Dragon, but I'm not sure. Tapping four here, what am I gonna do? Playing a Nevenerals Disc. Okay, this is perfect. And I've got Counter Magic up. So hopefully I can kind of contain the situation here. Counter away what's ever the most threatening. Yeah, there's a Sheevan Dragon that's so cool that he boarded that in. Just play out the Sheevan. Well, I mean, you don't want to play out the Sheevan because you're going to play into the uh, into the disc. So that would, would be a really stupid move. But I'm hoping to see the Sheevan somewhere in this game. It would be super, super cool. Anyway, going to use it here. This is just... The disc is so good. It's done so much for me in these games. I mean, my deck, after sideboarding, is much better against a Twiddle Volt. And of course, a Twiddle Volt player has a Red Elemental Blast, which are insane. Playing out a pirate ship. Sorry, a ghost ship here instead of the pirate ship. Of course, I want to keep the counter magic open. There's a Sylvan. I'm not countering this, though. Ooh. I'm, I probably don't have a counter spell, and if I don't counter it. Attacking for two here. Put him on 17. There is the pirate ship. And remember, it can attack because he has islands. Ooh, Regrove, interesting, and a Recall. Recall is not that great at the moment, although he can draw into extra cards if he wants to, but he's under some pressure as well. It's going to be a difficult game for Max, but he could Regrove. So he Regrove and then Regrove the Red Elemental Blast. Uh, you want to get the time fold back, but I think the Volt, I would just leave it for now. It's difficult. You could pay four extra lives. So you can do two things, right? You can play a land, exactly. And you can play the uh, the regrowth. I'm going to play the regrowth first, probably. Still have two blue open. Looks like I'm going to allow it. Needs to get back the Howling Mine. Of course, I can still counter. If I have a counter spell, I have no idea. I'm going to go to 12. This shows how important the Howling Mine is, right? And now I counter, so I'm waiting till the last moment. And it shows you how important the Howling Mine is. And now I can actually attack with both of my ships. That is so cool, because that hardly never happens. Wow, and an Ancestral Recall to refill my hand. It's looking really good for me. There's a Soul Ring. Gonna attack first, that makes sense. Gonna hit him for six, wow! Look at Pirate Ship doing work, ho ho! I'm so proud of my deck right now, so happy. Anyway, tapping five, playing an Air Elemental. Let's see, this is super difficult here for Max. What can he still do? He's got that Unsummon. The problem for Max here is that he's on six. He just doesn't have the luxury or the time. I mean, he could go for a time twister, which would be a huge gamble, and then just hope for the best. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. Makes sense. You got to play towards your out, so I understand this uh, this option. I mean, the boomerang only would have given him one extra turn. And yep, yeah, we're going to shuffle up. Look at that. I didn't have any counter spells in hand. Now, of course. This is not ideal for Max, but I understand the play. This is his only out. What he has to hope for now is that I'm just drawing nothing, and he's got like a super hand, like a golden hand. It has happened. I've, see, I've seen time twisters and, you know, one person drawing seven lands and the other one having the dream hand. You know, at least the time twister is giving him an option. And here we're shuffling up. It was really nice to play against Max, by the way. Really, really friendly, nice guy. He's a player from Germany.
And there we go. He's going to draw his seven. Now the good news for me here is that I've got three islands open, so I can still counter. But he has a red elemental blast to protect it. Oh, it doesn't look great. He needs a time vault. He doesn't have a lot of mana. Is no lands in there? I mean, it, it, it was a stretch, this time twister, because he really needed like the perfect hand. He needed like a Black Lotus and a Time Volt, and then, you know, untap the Time Volt with Twiddle to get in turn, protect it with Red Elemental Blast. That would have been kind of great, but he just simply doesn't have the components that he needs. He can, of course, try to use the Red Elemental Blast to give him another turn. Yeah, taking care of the ship. That is really cool. And he's got the Twiddle to tap down the Air Elemental. So he can wait for that. And then, oh, I found my Ancestral Recall again. Gonna play that out. That is very lucky. And I'm gonna untap, so I probably have Counter Magic in hand, but again, when you're max, you gotta play towards your outs. He's gonna try to twiddle here. Gonna go to four. Ooh, and it works. That surprises me. No Counter Magic, or perhaps I have a Side Blast in hand. Yeah, I've got a Side Blast in hand. Okay, that explains it. Side Blast, winning it here, two to one. And what I'm really happy with looking back at this match is that my sideboard plan worked out. You know, whenever you sideboard, you have this idea, this is what I want to do with the discs, this is what I want to do with the fluxes, and then when it really works, it's, it's great to see, it's very fulfilling. Anyway, uh, Max, thank you very much for the games. It was a really fun match in hindsight, but when I started, I have to admit, I was like, oh no, not Time Volt or Twiddle Volt. But uh, it was a great strategical match. Very interesting. It was great to see you play with this deck as well. Thank you for showing your skills on the channel. And if you want to see more action from the Off to Troll Cup, stick around. Keep your eyes on the channel. If you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe. Hit that button and ring that bell. And of course, like, share, and comment. All these things are free and they really help the channel move forward and you'll stay up to date about all that happens here on Timmy Talks. Talking about all of that, you can also become a patron of the show and support Timmy Talks financially as well. Please take a moment to surf to patreon.com slash Timmy Talks and have a look. You can already support Timmy Talks starting with just $1 a month. For now, thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.